So first of all, I'd like to thank Dor for letting us do this because I want to let you know this is the only opportunity we have had to present this issue. I worry a little bit about democracy and I understand about 501c3s. Um, and we get the response that this is a political issue, a contentious issue. And we have people from both parties working on this recall. And in my opinion, this is an issue of safety for our communities. And it is an issue of whether we will have a functioning fire district with the lowest mill rate in all of Arizona for uh, our, our fire district. <clears throat> Sorry, I get passionate and I get nervous. <laughs> so I want to talk first about why I got involved in this fire board recall effort. And I want to make the appeal to all of you here to attend a fire board meeting in person. Until you see with your own eyes the disdain, the lack of respect, the violation of open meeting laws. You don't truly really understand what is going on. I started attending when Chief Hazimi was still our chief. And I saw over and over this highly qualified chief asking the board to let him help, let him, let him inform them. And as one of our steering committee said in a public forum, whenever our chief offered to assist in the information gathering or asked to be involved, he was turned away like an uninvited guest. Once I saw what was occurring with my own eyes, I could not stay silent. And I've been involved almost every day since we filed papers. Uh, and I should say, the three people we are attempting to recall on the board are Charles Christensen, Dave Blower, and Phyllis Eric. We work hard on our presentations at the fire board meetings, yet they seem to fall on deaf ears. We have at least 30, sometimes up to 45 people uh, attending the meeting, speaking in public forum. And I want to give you just one instance of what happened. Uh, after our chief resigned, on the agenda <clears throat> was to select an interim chief. That evening, Mr. Blower came in, put a resume on everyone's desk. As Ty Montgomery stated that night, that's the first time he had seen this resume. They wanted to vote on it that night. No research, no discussion, that was it. What happened was they, the board, um, voted to go into executive session, but there was no attorney. The fire board has an attorney, but there was no attorney there. We, in the public, did a wrong thing. We spoke out, I admit it, during the meeting, <laughs> but we were saying, very loudly, we were called an unruly crowd. Uh, you can't do that. There is no attorney here. This is a violation of open meeting law. They called the cops on us, and now they want a, um, a policeman at every meeting. Besides our former chief, we have wonderful people at the fire district who are dedicated to our safety. And I've gotten to know many of them, and I honor them for continuing their dedication under these difficult times and assault on the district. Morale is low, people feel intimidated, and are concerned for their jobs if they speak out. The fire board has an excellent business manager by the name of Karen Danes. And she gave a presentation on the budget. We're going to do an amended um, <clears throat> presentation here. She was ordered not to appear today. Ordered. 
This is public information that was presented at the board meeting. And at that board meeting, when she showed the budget and ramifications, after she was done, there was no discussion, no comment. They voted to adjourn the meeting. Let me list for you the positions of people who have left. HR manager, telecom manager, regional communications manager, dispatcher, senior office assistant, mechanic, telecom technician, inspector, deputy fire marshal, IT director, and of course, our chief Hazimi. Now, with this decimated management, they have passed, uh, <clears throat> voted on having a $190,000 audit. And they say it's to improve efficiency. With people doing two and three jobs now, I think it's hard to improve efficiency. Wikipedia says there are three reasons for recall. Incompetence, unethical behavior, irresponsibility. I believe we have a just cause in this recall effort. Um, last, um, we have some very eloquent speakers at these public forums. And one gentleman said to sum it up, cutting $50 off my taxes isn't worth my life. This is a safety issue, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Well, after that illustrious introduction, I uh, only uh, can say uh, <clears throat> this is my second term on the board. I've gone through a number of uh, procedures, uh, personnel, and uh, conflicts of interest, and uh, many things that have caused me, who I act independently, vote the way I vote, because I'm trying to do my very best and represent the most people. Uh, we're having a forensic audit right now, <clears throat> so I can't speak to too many issues because they are quite controversial and we are restricted by executive privilege and by legal matters. At the termination of this forensic audit, I feel it's justified because over the years I've been there, there have been a number of serious irregularities. People have been asked to resign. And uh, the chief is here, and uh, I'm not going to go into any, any further discussion on that except to say he's asked several people to resign. So after this forensic audit, I think a lot of things are going to be clear, and we can publish them, and I will present to you at that time. But right now, uh, I'm concerned. I'm not going to go into any character assassination. I'm not going to discuss any names, but I'm going to say this audit is definitely required. I think it's going to produce some uh, very significant and uh, very important uh, outcomes. So with that, uh, I'm also going to say the uh, district over the years that I've been there has been a rumor mill. Many things have come out of there that are not true. And we have faced those things the best we can. The board has suffered a lot of severe character assassination and threats. We're unpaid. We're doing the best we can. And in some cases, we have made mistakes. But the reason for this forensic audit is to correct a lot of this and uh, show why some of the things that have happened have happened. Uh, I will go forward with uh, the rest of the members of the board and say we are unpaid. We're doing the best we can to represent the people of the district. We're very concerned because we've taken a budget that is, was, in my estimation, completely out of control and i gotten it back into a position of uh, being reasonable. So. Uh, Without going any further, uh, all I can say is I do the best I can to represent the whole community, and I am proud of who I am and what I've done. Thank you. And, uh, 
Thank you. Thanks for coming, Charlie. I'd like to uh, just say a few words. And this is just from personal experience as your fire chief uh, in the last two years. I came to this organization from uh, a totally different fire department, not a fire district, uh, back in Dearborn, Michigan. And uh, being able to serve 25 years there and five years as a fire chief gave me a, a, a great insight on roles and responsibilities and what it takes to be in the fire service. Um, through that experience, I came here to Sedona and quickly identified, um, as Mr. Christensen mentioned, some personnel that needed to, uh, to go. And either you were going to be terminated or, or they had a choice to resign, I chose to resign. That was about two people, I believe. The rest took it upon themselves to leave. People don't leave an organization because of taking a reduction in pay or um, um, taking on more responsibilities. They leave an organization because of fear. That's why people leave. Um, that's the way I perceive what had happened here in Sedona. And that's unfortunate. Um, I have seen nothing but professionalism. I've seen loyalty to this organization. I've seen a level of skills that I've never seen before. Some of the work that the firefighters do and the administrative staff do is just unbelievable. They go above and beyond. Um, we are very, very fortunate to have a fire district that we have in front of us. And, um, it's something we don't want to lose. Me as a taxpayer and a citizen, and I'll be continue, continuously uh, living in, uh, in the fire district. My new position is not going to require me to live in the, in the Verde Valley, so I'm fortunate to be able to stay here. Um, so now it's still an interest of mine to make sure that we have the best fire district that uh, we could possibly have. Um, it's not about going out there and screaming people are going to die, but the fact of the matter is in public safety, that's exactly what happens. If you don't have adequate staffing, adequate equipment, adequate training, um, it's, we're not going to get the service that we expect when we call 911. Hopefully nobody ever has to use that number, but if you do, you certainly want the best that you can get showing up at your door, walking into your living room and saving your loved ones. I've seen it time and time again here in Sedona. I've received so many emails and letters and phone calls, not only from residents, but from visitors. Two thirds of our, our medical incidents are from visitors who come back to Sedona because they know it's a safe place. They have a misfortunate accident up on one of our cliffs and we can respond quickly, rescue them, get them to, to safety. They go home and they're still alive. They want to come back to Sedona. It's not only beautiful, but it's safe. It's a quality of life. Um, I think that's better stop there. <laughs> um, thank you for your time.